Howdy folks, Bud Rowland here. We're going to talk to you about some of the basic flies that we use and how to tie them. Basically, we're going to feature in on the numero uno. And I'm sure you've heard about it. So keep watching here. We'll show you how to make this fly. Today we're going to talk about a fly that's been extremely popular in South Texas and growing in other, other areas. It's called the numero uno. And the reason it's so popular, it's taken a lot of big trout. And I'm not going to I'm not going to just dwell on the big trout, but it's a, it's a, it's a trout killer. Red, it's good on red. It's actually good on anything you want to fish for. And uh, so we've had tremendous amount of inquiries. We did a little video on this once, but it wasn't real in close. So we're going to do a close one right now. We're going to knock, do a numero uno. Then we're going to talk about this fly right here. And this is, this is called the Attractor Mud Minnow. It's done in natural colors and attractor colors and uh, they all work very well and it's probably become my number one fly at the present time. Now these flies also are weedless because we put bucktail on them here and we palmer it on here and you have what we call it a beard. Some of them are a full beard that go all the way back with the bucktail and some of them we cut off like this and if you want to fish the, the jetties and the rocks, fish the mangroves, fish grass beds, oyster beds. This fly is fantastic as well as the numero uno because you just don't stick it hardly at all. And it'll go through grass and, and, and oysters and stuff. It's unbelievable. So uh, I've taken so many big trout on this fly. It's, it's I, and later some more videos, we're gonna show you some of the fish that we've taken on this fly. It's been, it's, it's, a, it's a world record tie and so is the numero uno. So, uh, I think you'll enjoy it, but then we're just—we're not going to tie this one. We're going to do the numero uno because that's the one we've had the most repeat calls on. Okay, now we're going to talk about some of the hooks because a lot of people, what kind of hook do you use for this? What kind of hook do you do for that? Well, back 20, 30 years ago, even 40 years ago, we mostly used what was called a Mustad 34007. And uh, it's a stainless steel hook. This is one right here in Old Mustad. There's a big one. And uh, I've literally taken about every kind of fish you can think of, and so has a lot of other fly fishermen, on Mustad hooks. The only problem with the Mustad is it a big fish can bend this hook. I lost a black marlin on, on one of these. It actually bent it out. And uh, it's still a good hook. They do need to be sharpened once in a while. But all of the manufacturers of hooks today, uh, all of them, uh, Umqua, uh, Daiichi, uh, they're all, they all make really great saltwater hooks. And that's what I use because if I'm going to spend the time and the money to tie a good fly, I don't want something that's going to rust out. If I didn't wash it good, it's in my bag. So what we're going to use today, this hook right here happens to be a mustad, and it's called, it is called a tarpon hook. And uh, they're 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 not as expensive as a lot of the hooks. Some of those hooks you you get into cost you over a dollar wholesale, and that gets up to a buck and a half so retail. And uh, so this is a good hook. Another hook, probably one of my favorite hooks for for tarpon, snook, and big offshore fish or little fish in the bay. It's called a it's an Umqua 600s. Now that's this hook right here. Another hook that I'm going to tell you to look at is the it's also uh, an Umqua hook, and it's called the 800S, a great hook, and a lot of Florida fishermen use this hook, and a lot of people in the Midwest and other states are finding this is a great hook, probably one of the best damn hooks out there, and they don't need to be sharpened. And there's, there, there's the 600 right there, two of the greatest hooks out there. Fantastic hooks, good ones, and that's a, that, I catch a lot of fish on that hook right there. So we're going we're gonna to start off and we're going to do something called, we're going to put a saddle on here. And the reason we're putting a saddle on there, because when you tighten it down, you don't have to put glue on it to hold your eyes on if you're using uh, different eyes, which we're going to use a, do a bead eye. 
And I'm going to put my glasses on so I can see better. We're going to put a little saddle right in here. Now you see it's higher right here and higher there. And then we're going to go on back to the very back of the hook. And I put a little bump right back here too. And the reason for that, that I do that, is when I'm putting deer hair or something on there, it keeps it from going down so much. This will hold right here and keep from sliding and, and you, your, your material won't turn so quick. Now what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna take some 12 to 20 pound monofilament right here. And we've got some beads that you can get in any craft store or fly shop. These are black because we're going to do a numeral uno, but we're going to use these beads. And this is some of the best eyes and cheapest eyes that you'll ever see. You see, I've taken that mono there, and I got these. I'm going to come take the end of my mono, the tag end, and I'm going to go right back through these bead eyes. That mono's curly. That's going to look like this. And we're going to pull that up. And we're going to pinch it tight. Yeah. And we're going to lay that right in that saddle right here. And make a couple loops there and pull over here. Now you say, well, why use bead eyes? Well, why would you use bead eyes? They'll weigh about the same as a lot of dumbbell eyes. If you're doing uh, bonefish, permit, stuff like that, you, you put the, the metal bead eyes, whether it's copper, stainless steel, or whatever, on there. You go fish it, and you, you wash it out when you're there. You, and maybe you wash it out when you get home, but you look at your bag a month or two later, they've corroded. This will not corrode. I've thrown it into the jetties, oyster reefs, everywhere. I have very seldom ever had a problem with these eyes. Okay, I'm going to cut this off right here. Now we're going to we're going to tighten this up. A lot of people put glue on their eyes and all that. If you're doing, I will go around there three or four times. Go around this way three or four times, and then I will go under them. Now, if, when you, if you'll pull down like this here, instead of pulling up, you'll tighten it better than anything else. And you'll also, by pulling, not pulling down, you'll sometimes will break the thread. Now, that's smooth. You can hardly turn that now. That's what we want. So now we're going to put a little tail. We use different tails. We use fox fur. We use a... a Old tails from all offshore fishing lures, but we're going to use a twister tail and some fox fur on this one right here. Pretty simple fly once you get onto it to tie. Believe me, I like a tail on a fly. All the fish like to chase tail too. <laughs> Now we're going to we're going to use some what's called fly tails, twister tails, whatever you want to call them, and they come in every color, beautiful colors, attractor colors, natural colors, whatever you want to use. We're going to use a little purple. And this fly is is weedless. It will be tied weedless. You can literally throw it into about any anywhere you want and. It's going to perform. And the next thing we're going to put on here is some pearl Chanel. It's like this right here. You can get it in any fly, usually most fly shops. Spirit River 
that's still producing. They kind of, the guy that had it sold out, but uh, another company bought them out. A lot of the manufacturers make this, Wapsie, lots of them. So Pearl Chanel gives you great traction on the body. This vise is not real tight. Now that's basically a numero uno, except we've got to put the weedless on there, which really makes a numero uno out of it. Makes it number one. And for the beard, that's going to come next. We're going to use bucktail. This happens to be natural, but been, been, it's been bleached bucktail. To give you an idea, that you can use any color you want. Here's a nice chartreuse bucktail and this is a piece just a piece of bucktail that's been dyed in this color we're going to take about that much this is what we're going to make our weedless weed guard with we'll put that on there like this make a couple wraps there Pull that up and palmer around it, pulling it tight. I do 21 wraps to get it where I want it. Uh, now we're, we're going to we're going to wind it. You can leave this beard on, pull it back a little bit, and tie it like that. And I fish it that way if I'm really in brushy, heavy stuff. But normally, I will line my scissors up with the end of the hook right here, and I'll cut that off. And this is a a weedless numero uno, and it is. About as weedless as you can get. For some reason, the deer here doesn't bother uh, the fish strike or, or a loss of a fish. I mean, I've taken thousands and thousands of fish on these things, and I think only one time did I lose a, a pretty good sized trout, and I did had I had actually too much on. It was too stiff, and and I hadn't trimmed it. I just and uh, this one's been trimmed and. Works fantastic, and we're using a Martelli tool to take and put our finish knot on there. And by using this tool, and then it's about two times, you don't need to put any head seam in if you don't want to. It'll work fine, it's not going anywhere. A lot of people want to put head seam in, and, but I don't. And that's the finished product. That's a numero uno. Do it in many, many colors, natural, tractor colors, whatever. Great fly, taking a bunch of world records on that fly. To all of you out there, we want to thank you for being with us. We hope you've enjoyed this little tips on tying some flies. And uh, we plan to show you a lot more. Uh, we're going to talk about boats, flats boats, uh, netted towers for fly fishing different rods and reels that we use, uh, any, about any price range you want to get into. And we suggest if you want to learn fly fishing, you're beginners, join a fly fishing club in your, in your local area. You can go a couple of times. They don't charge you nothing. And go to your fly shop and they'll tell you, you know, with the clubs that's, that's in the area that you might want to get involved in. And sometimes there'll be free fly tying lessons at some of the fly shops. And, uh, uh, you can go in there and learn a lot. And if they don't want to spend time with you, hey, watch me. Because <laughs> we plan to have a lot more of these on the air, on YouTube and different areas. So uh, we're going to be talking about all kinds of flies, offshore, inshore, 
mainly salt water is what we're geared for, but we will may down the line do some fresh water. I'm a young guy, hell, I'm only going, I'm only 85 years old, you know, and I still like to fish, hunt, and do the whole thing. And I like to go dancing once in a while, too. <laughs> so that's it, Bud Rowland here. We're going to wind her up. In my mind, I've got a big red on the line. That's where I go when I'm itching. To feed my seven-day addiction.